Why pay more for what you can get for free? Or why pay more for a rig than you really need to? On the flip side, I got a new hat. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey y'all, hey, Tom, ND3N here. And thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. This time, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the benefits of paying for software when something that does the exact same thing, well, not exact same thing, but the same thing is available for free. I'll also be doing some of the same thing uh, discussion for our heart. When considering the basic premise that you get what you pay for, I am an unapologetic believer in capitalism. Under this system, companies only make money by investing and making improvements to their product lines. They then are able to keep their existing customers while bringing in new customers as their products satisfy more people and more needs. Uh, this does mean that they have two departments. Uh, first is the marketing department that presents their products in the best light. You gotta take this with a grain of salt because sometimes they will not lie but slightly misrepresent what their products are capable of. What a fuss you make over a little white fib. On the flip side, they also invest heavily in their customer service departments, which works closely with their engineering folks. So when there is a problem, it is quickly dealt with, uh, so they keep the customer satisfied. If a company doesn't make a profit, then they have some other motivation for producing that product. Uh, I won't get into the politics of that. Uh, they have no reason to uh, invest in customer service, uh, but they do invest in marketing with the expected worst results. Conversely, when someone or some group puts together a product for free use by their target users, uh, they are depending on word of mouth advertising, so they really don't need a marketing department. Or <laughs> rather, we are their marketing department. They don't need customer service because since you get what you pay for, if you don't like what you got for free, you really don't have much of a recourse. However, they are generally not making a profit from their product. Sometimes they'll add some advertising or something like that where they are making a profit, but uh, that's, uh, that's in the video for another time. Regardless, they are generally not making a profit from their product, meaning that their investment is their time. So their improvements take away the time that could be spent with their family and friends or chasing DX. Let's take a look at software to begin with. I think the most familiar one to us all, and I'm using this one as an example because we pretty much all use it, uh, is Windows uh, software by Microsoft. Now I started using Windows at version 3, which was at that time not much more than a shell that you had to go in and link each icon to. Uh, it had none of what we are now familiar with, but it was a heck of a lot easier to use than DOS commands. Since that time, Microsoft has made incremental changes that brought us to what we have now. Apple, and to a lesser extent Linux, have followed the same path. Along the way, there have been a number of other operating systems developed and provided for free. And to be honest, some of them were pretty good but they have mostly faded in popularity and now are mere footnotes in the history of computer science. Again, it's the principle of you get what you pay for. In the ham radio world, there are a couple of examples of the same thing. For contesting, there's WriteLog, which is a paid software package, and full disclosure is the one that I use. Uh, there are literally dozens of other free contest software packages, uh, but the only one that I would recommend is N1MM. 
Now, if you have a suggestion or a problem with WriteLog, they have an easy access form online where you can express your concerns. And for the times that I've used it, and it's only been a handful, I've been using it for probably six years now, uh, my problem has been resolved within a couple of hours. N1MM has a huge following and numerous user groups that can resolve your problem, but it may take a week or two. The 30 bucks a year that I pay to WriteLog is worth it to me because I know I'll get free upgrades for a year and that will include just about every contest available, fixing any glitches, and that I have technical assistance readily available. I've even seen them release an upgrade in the middle of a contest to deal with a problem on their software in that contest. It took uh, 30 seconds just to, to push that upload and uh, they sent emails out to everybody. Uh, it, it, that's the kind of service you can expect from a for-profit company. Now, for the non-contesters who are watching this, first, I encourage you to give it a shot. Here's a video uh, right up here uh, that talks about some of the benefits of contesting. But I didn't want to talk to you about contesting. I wanted to give you another contrast. This time, comparing Ham Radio Deluxe with DM780 to DigiPen. HRD used to be a free software package, at least to ham radio operators. The creators, uh, well, HRD has always been a for-profit company, and the creators of HRD would sell their, their package to governments and industries for their digital communications needs. Now, because they were hams, they provided it free of charge to amateurs worldwide and we acted as their unofficial or de facto beta testers. Eventually it was sold and is now licensed for $60 a year, although occasionally they do have sales at significantly lower prices, which usually coincide with holidays. So keep your, you can keep your eyes open around Christmas and President's Day and you know, whenever you'll see a car sale going on, chances are there's a good chance a HRD sale is going on. Uh, for this, you will get all the upgrades for a year, all the uh, glitch repairs, because it's a complex piece of software, there are going to be glitches, and technical service. DigiPan is freeware, and while they were will both work to do several flavors of PSK or phase shift keying, a very popular mode. DigiPan is limited to just a handful of variations on a theme, while HRD has, uh, at my last count, 86 different modes that it supports. And not just PSK. It'll do Riddy and Olivia and a bunch of them. DM780 is just one part of the HRD software suite, which includes a fantastic logger, slow scan TV, satellite, rotator control, and they all work together. Uh, you're not running standalone modes. Uh, DigiPan hasn't changed much since it was first released, and there are dozens of similar programs like it with the same benefits and limitations. HRD is continually upgrading and adding to its software suite. I was recently shown an upgrade that they are working on, and while I won't go into specifics, mostly because I want to stay on their good side and they trusted me enough to show it to me, uh, I will let you know I'm really looking forward to this and, and some of the other things they have in the works. When discussing our rigs and other hardware, Many hams will go for the less expensive radios. Many of them are made in China, uh, where profit is not a high concern. These rigs are available on Amazon, starting at around 20 bucks. Let's compare them to equivalent rigs. For example, let's look at two dual band HTs. The Baofeng UV5R, which you can get uh, on Amazon at 25 bucks, 
and the Yaesu FT60R at 155 bucks. I always see posts on social media where the new owners of the Baofeng radio are asking for advice on how to program it, how to use it, how to make it stop Chinese talking Chinese to them. Well, I've never seen a similar post about the Yesu. The Baofeng frankly looks cheaply made, where the Yesu is built like a tank. A tank! And now let me tell you a little story. I was on the roof of my two-story house where I previously lived in Maryland, cleaning out the gutters. Had a huge tree, uh, it was probably 200 years old, it was actually protected by the community or the county. Uh, I couldn't cut it down, I would have in a heartbeat uh, put up a tower there instead. The leaves coming off that thing clogged my gutters, so I was constantly up on my roof cleaning out the gutters. One time I was up there, I had my Yesu on my belt clip. When it slipped off the clip and slid down the roof over the edge and fell about 15 feet to my concrete uh, driveway below. Well, I climbed down the ladder expecting that I had just lost a rig. Uh, to my surprise, with the exception of a tiny little uh, dent on the bottom that you really had to look for to see it. It didn't crack. Just a kind of compress the uh, material of the case a little bit. Uh, you, you probably wouldn't even notice if you didn't know where to look. Uh, the radio was in near perfect condition. It was still turned on and the display looked pristine. I keyed up the local repeater and made a call and was immediately replied to with the report that I sounded just fine from a station that also sounded just fine. It worked both ways. Now I can only imagine what the result of that incident would have been had I been carrying a ball thing. Now I have owned and used the FT60R for well over 10 years, probably closer to 15. And while I do own several other HTs, the Yesu is the one that I toss in my carry-on bag when I go on business trips. It's easy and intuitive to hand program and when I get to my hotel room, it only takes a moment with the repeater book app on my phone to identify a handful of repeaters and another two or three minutes to program them in. Literally, once you start, it's you know, 30 seconds per repeater. It's easy. That includes, uh, that includes putting in the tones and saving it to memory and all of that. The instruction manuals couldn't be more different where it is obvious that the Baofeng manual is translated from Chinese and not very well. It's really hard to follow. It's not organized very well. The ASUS manual is simple to understand with clear instructions, lots of pictures and stuff like that. And it's not translated English. It is written in English for English readers. Speak in English, speak in English. Now, I have to assume that the manuals for both manufacturers are the same for other languages where they're sold. Internally, Yesu uses really good components and manufacturing techniques it's put together by highly trained and well-paid technicians, while Baofeng uses lower quality parts and are, they're produced in Chinese factories by minimally trained and we'll just say poorly paid workers. Uh, the same comparisons can be made for mobile rigs. Uh, but let's move on to discussing uh, HF base stations. I own two HF radios. The Yesu FT991A, which has an MSRP of $1,229.95, but you can find it for a lower cost and a Kenwood, right down here, TS890S, which has an SR, MSRP of $4,679.95. It too can be found at a significantly reduced price, uh, but since those prices for both the Yesu and the Kenwood are based on sales prices and uh, 
specials that the manufacturer have, have offered the retailers and stuff like that that don't always last for a long time. I went with the MSRP. Do your own shopping, you'll see the, those numbers. Uh, let's take a look at what you get with these two different radios. Now, first off, both radios have HF plus the six meter band, and the 991A includes VHF and UHF. Both radios have all modes, and with the 991A adding system fusion to the mix. Both radios have advanced uh, digital signal processors, or DSPs. And both radios have built-in antenna tuners, CW keener, keyers, and all the other features that you, know, you would come to expect from a modern radio. So, at face value, it would seem that the 91A is a better radio, or at least has more capabilities. So why should you spend the extra $3,000 for the TS-890? Good question. Uh, let me tell you how I use these radios in my shack. The 890 is my primary station rig, and the 991A is my back, backup HF rig. The 91A is also my primary station VHF UHF radio. Now, as a side note, my philosophy is that the best use for VHF UHF comms is to brag about what you did on HF. The difference in price is because of the difference in quality. The 991A has three DSPs, the 890 has seven. Seven, yeah. Uh, uh, I've looked inside both radios. I can tell you that the quality of work on both is nearly identical. However, the components used in the 890 are of the absolute highest quality. Uh, they buy them uh, and pay more for those components so they can get a better acting radio. Uh, components in the 991A are of a good quality. You, they're reliable. Okay, but the 890 takes it to another level. The 890 is easier to work with, has better audio, can access more functions from buttons on the front of the radio, whereas the 991A has okay audio, it function, access its functions through and uh, on one button on the front, then you go to the screen and jump around till you find the function you want and then you have to set that and go into the menu items and make sure that it's going to be working when it gets there. <coughs> Lots of jumping through hoops. Uh, on top of all that, the 991 can be a little finicky while operating. Uh, not to the point where I wanted to send it back, uh, but just kind of where I had to step back for a second go, oh, I got to do this now, now I'll go back. Uh, that said, both are good quality rigs and I would recommend either of them to anyone. So, in summary, and to answer the question that I asked in the beginning, do I really want you to pay for something that's freely available? And do I really want you to pay more for something that does the same job? Well, if everyone was in my circumstances, the answer would be an emphatic yes. Like I said, I'm, I'm a capitalist. I believe that when we support profit-making companies, then those companies make better products for us, which makes our experience as, a, as amateur radio operator better. Uh, but I understand that not everyone has the resources that I do or is in the same financial state. Uh, some of you are just starting off in life and are struggling to make ends meet. For those in this phase of your life, please understand that I've been where you're at now and I've worked very hard to get where I am now. Hopefully, you'll be able to reach further and go further in your life than I have, I could even dream of. Uh, that's my wish for you. Experiencing a mode with a free program is better than not experiencing the mode at all because you can't afford the paid program.
Getting on the air with a less expensive radio is better than not getting on the air at all. So take this with a grain of salt and the knowledge that someday you'll be able to trade in your less expensive radio for a better built, better quality, easier to use uh, radio, probably with more functions. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. Uh, now I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this and will take my opinions in the spirit in which they were intended. Please give me a like. <laughs> please like me. By popping that thumbs up icon and please share. Sharing is good this with your friends, especially on social media. Please leave a comment. Questions? Comments? Especially about the hat down below. And finally, please consider subscribing to this channel. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, bros. 73, until the next time. As always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, just like it still says on the hat, and I'm out.